Uh, having said that, we're already growing. So these KLBP workshops that we've been hosting, we got one and two done, and I see a lot of the content contributors here in the audience. Thank you guys very much for your continued, you know, just diligence at being awesome and sharing your awesomeness with not just me right now, because I'm the only one who's heard it, but I look forward to sharing it with everybody else so we can be up and broadcasting and everybody else can hear it. But uh, let's see, workshop one and two, a couple of notes. Excellent turnout of talent and content. That's all I have to say about that, it was fantastic. I mean, there was about 12 people at the first one and 10 people at the second one. Workshop three is gonna be hosted here next Sunday, which I just got approval for, so if you feel like it, next work, next Sunday, the time is to be announced, but we're gonna be editing. That's number one and two was curating and capturing. Three is editing. Four is gonna be the critique, so we all get to find out how how much we like hearing our own voices, which is always fun. Um, there's gonna be a programming grid coming out. I don't even know what this says, but I'm just gonna keep going with my notes. Submission form, so that actually is in line with what I'm talking about. We need more shows. We have a lot of hours to fill and we need people to help us fill it, otherwise we're gonna keep playing things on loop, which will get real old after a while, but at the same time, it meets our FCC requirement. We just need to be broadcasting. Well, so we need... also in the program, by the way. There you go. That's why she's pressed. <laughs> yeah. um, as far as the program is concerned, I have all the faith in the world that Long Beach has talented people. Now, we just need you to step up and be that. So please come out, turn out, let us just help you be you. That's all we want to do. You're already doing it, now share it. And if you don't want to, then that's fine too. I mean, there's... There's a lot of people who just want to keep their opinions to themselves, but if you want to share yours, come out, we'll help you. Um, tower. So to do that, we need a tower. Essentially, the radio station does not exist without the tower. The studio and the build-out is awesome, and we're extremely grateful, but none of that matters unless we get a broadcast signal sent out via a tower. The tower is going to be pretty crucial for our development, but at the same time, it's going to be a little bit tricky at first because it's not in the desired location. Our tower is going to be over in Wilmington somewhere off the other side of 710 due to the fact that the FCC has permit uh, limitations on where we can put it since we are an LP FM and not a full-fledged uh, radio station, essentially. We have like a two-year probationary period. I don't know, I have Peter Frank here judging my words right now. <laughs> he knows more about it but essentially you know if if we do this correctly uh, part, of, part of what our restriction is is there's a full power 99.1 broadcasting out of riverside right. knock it down that, you can see that red <laughs> pink uh area which is the area we are not allowed to put an antenna so um that said uh, but we, we can, can broadcast Yes, our signal can, can fall into that area, but our antenna can't sit within it, so that's the only restriction. That's the restriction, is that it has to be on this side of the red line, and only at 100 watts, which means that our signal will reach most of downtown and Pedro and other places. It's not, some, not the most desirable, but if we do it correctly, we can refile and, and re, you know, we can move it. But we have to get legit first, and that's where this is all coming to a head, is that this is, from the ground up, we just got to start somewhere. And this is where we're going to start. So, and we, and we, have, start those, we have those Use the mic. people so that... Use the mic, we can't hear you. <laughs> We, we have those maps out too, so that if you know any landowners in those areas and want to help us, we are going to be forming a, a tower search party. So uh, you have that guide, contact us, our information is on, on the program and we can get you involved with helping us find the tower. Yes, nice. What she just said. Uh, financial report, that's not me. It's been a pleasure talking with you guys. I look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully next Sunday, for whoever wants to turn up to it. If you have any questions about shows or any production needs, meet me after the show, or there might be a Q&A after this, but I'm happy to help each and every one of you actualize your dreams of making something happen. So, cheers. Thank you. So I'm Chris.
currently the interim treasurer, and this is not my specialty, so I do apologize if I don't speak about these things exactly correctly. But I will um, attempt to give a treasurer's report. <laughs> Um, I did have some significant help from uh, a friend of a friend, Mark Deicher, who is now my friend. <laughs> and he helped me put together a financial report for 2017, which, and also reworked one for 2016. So now we have actual numbers that we can all look at, and we know how much money came in and how much went out, and um, 2017, more money went out than came in. <laughs> But the good news is, in January of this year, we've already brought in. Um, hold on, we've already brought in almost fifteen hundred dollars in donations. So we're in a good place at the moment, and um, we're poised for doing some serious fundraising this year and grant writing because we have a budget of about a projected need of about forty-five thousand dollars to do everything we need to do in the next nine, ten months. Um, and uh, we currently have um, about $1,800 in the bank. <laughs> so um, just to say uh, we're grateful for everyone who can become a member because we're, your dues are going to a good place and we're grateful for anyone who can do any size of a donation. Naturally, the bigger the better, um, but anything is welcome. Um, I think that's it. Where are my <laughs> um, so over uh, 2017, we um, took in about $2,000 in memberships and workshop uh, fees. We took in $690 in donations. We paid uh, almost $1,400 in legal fees. And we also paid um, 20, almost $2,700 in storing the equipment that was donated to us, awaiting a place to put it into a studio. <laughs> so, uh, and Ron kindly uh, offered us a place to keep that for free until the studio is built out so we have no more storage fees. <laughs> Yay. Again, in uh, 2018, $1,500 in donations, and so far, only $331 in expenses. And uh, in case anyone was concerned, um, I know that uh, there's been lots of rumors that uh, we lost our tax-exempt status at one point in time, and, and we weren't um, operating legally. But uh, to uh, set the record straight, I, we did lose our tax status on an automatic um, thing that the state of California does if you miss your tax filing. But we got a CPA to file for us and everything was reinstated retroactively. So for the record, we've never been without our tax exempt status since 2009 and we have tax uh, returns on file with the state and with the IRS from 2009 every year to 2017. The other thing too is our Secretary of State paperwork was updated, so um, the current makeup that shows up on our Secretary of State nonprofit paperwork is our current board and that's up to date and reflects our organization. Um, one of the things I want to, oh yeah, our membership and uh, donations fees. So. Just so you know, our membership fees aren't tax deductible because they're um, they're like a benefit that you pay into, so we can't write those off, or you can't write those off. But any donations you do make to the organization, aside from that, are tax deductible, so you can get a tax receipt. If you donated last year and have don't have a tax receipt, um, contact us and we'll make sure that you get one. We've been trying to do all the payments automatically so that you automatically get a receipt, um, but if you missed it for some reason, let us know and we'll make sure you get one. Yeah, so our projected cost for next or for 2018 is about forty-five thousand um, dollars. So we will be doing some pretty big fundraising initiatives uh, this coming year. Uh, one of them being a founders campaign. So probably about mid-March or so, we're going to do a founders campaign, which will include different perks within our studio. Um, you know, doing things like you get a work, uh, a, a studio session if you pay a certain amount, things like that. So 
look out for that. We've got that coming up. We're also looking to form a big KLBP concert with a lot of local promoters in Long Beach. Um, so we're trying to really get everybody, at least in the music community, engaged and working with each other because this will benefit ultimately the entire community. Um, and then continued members and donations, doing a few membership uh, drives. Um, and then we are forming a grants and resources committee. Um, one of the things we just haven't had a chance to do is actual grant writing because we've kind of had to deal for a whole year with legal issues. Yeah. So now that that's off our plate, our focus this year is really getting aggressive with the grants and, and, and the grant writing. Um, and then I just want to give you kind of an, an overview of what our 2018 timeline looks like. I'm going to move this way so I could see it. We'll put this presentation up online too, by the way, so if you guys want to look through it. Um, so Q1, we'll continue our, our beginners workshops. We're also looking to get some master classes going, uh, focused on voice, uh, board operation, story developing, development, and ho hosting some open critiques. Um, so that way we, it, you know, if you want some feedback about your show or are feeling self-conscious or want some pointers, you can get in, in a group with people and really discuss how you strengthen your shows. Um, we're forming an advisory board in March, as, as we had mentioned earlier, grant writing. We're doing a big volunteer potluck on February 25th uh, at noon. Uh, the location isn't announced yet. We're thinking we're probably going to do it maybe at Bluff Park, but look out on our Facebook for the official announcement of where we're doing it. Uh, but that'll be our way of getting several people who have expressed interest in volunteering involved and breaking up into groups so that we can really rely on our community to help us meet, meet all the targets we have for 2018. Um, we've, we've been waiting on membership cards. We kind of held off on doing them because of the name changes and we were kind of unsure. But now that we're all settled, we should have them within like a week. So if you are a member, we're going to be reaching out to you, make, making sure we have your address on file so we get those mailed out to you. Um, and we've been working with local businesses to kind of give us some, some discounts and perks for members. So you'll be getting those probably by March the latest, I, I, I think. Um, as we mentioned earlier, this, this quarter we're doing a big antenna search party. So we've already started rolling on it. And like I said, if you have any interest in it, uh, definitely reach out to us if you want to be a part of our antenna search party. Um, in our second quarter, April to June, we're looking at doing some more mobile recording days. Um, just like the second part of our workshop was a recording, a recording day, so you were able to schedule a 30-minute time slot to come in and record a segment and kind of get some practice. So we'll be doing more of those kind of sessions so to give you guys an opportunity, at least until the studio is built out. Ho hosting those mobile kind of days will be really helpful. Um, and then launching our online stream. So before we actually get to air, we'll probably be doing like a beta sort of online stream with a lot of pre-recorded content. Uh, we won't be ready to be producing live content yet, but we're getting there. Uh, our capital campaign, which will be our, our founder circle, um, working on our studio policies and procedures and a continued antenna search. And then by the, our third quarter, July through September, is when we're hoping to do our studio movement. Uh, and some studio training at the studio. So, you know, teaching people how to do the technical things like board operations, so we'll have studio days. Um, antenna engineering studies, waivers, and any pending FCC filings that we need to do prior to broadcast. And then October to, through no, December is kind of, that's when we need to get serious and be broadcasting because we have to start broadcasting by December 23rd, 2018 or this year, so if we don't get on, on air, we lose our permit. So December is a very important day. That's why we're aiming to have it up by October. <laughs> so that if we hit any delays or any errors, we have time to remedy them before we go on air and contest our broadcast. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too is our organization, because we're, we're committed to uh, local media and public media beyond radio, one of the things we want to start thinking about is doing public media lecture series, start thinking about how we start offering grants to people who want to do certain public or public related reporting who don't have the finances or resources to kind of fund that investigative sort of research or things like that. But that's kind of a year two thing. But that's kind of the, the mission of our organization is to promote that media outside of, of radio. Um, 
and the organization is actually the, the owner of the permit. So when you see the two names, it might be confusing, but Long Beach Public Media is a nonprofit who owns the license to broadcast at, at KLBP. Um, so I want to invite all of you guys to stay in touch. Uh, go to klbp-fm.org, uh, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Those are all located on the bottom of your program. Too. If you haven't gotten a copy of the program, all those links are up on there. And I'll let Andrea come up. She's going to make a quick announcement. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I realized I, I wrote that we'd do a Q&A. So if anybody has any questions for us, we're free to answer any questions before we take an intermission. Oh yeah, we've, we've gotten a new webmaster who has volunteered their time to develop our website. So our website right now is currently in development and we're talking about which different streaming platforms we're gonna use. So our, our, our online streaming will be more of a pre-recorded kind of thing. So there are already people who have been producing shows regularly. So that's where we'll be plugging them in, start building a presence online so that people can start to hear it, get familiar with it. Um, we're also looking to have profiles on the programmers there, uh, information on how to submit your program and everything. Um, and yeah, that's about where we're at right now. But luckily we, we found a, 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 a webmaster, Dave Kornblum from Blaster Web Services, who's currently working on developing our, our website. December 23rd is when we have to be broadcasting and the tower has to be up. Oh. So if we get the tower up like the week before, as, <laughs> which hopefully we don't, uh, it, as long as we're broadcasting and the tower is up by the 23rd, we're, we're in the clear. You have to be a member in order to pursue a show idea? No, not yet. I mean, no. <laughs> we're going to allow content from pretty much anybody. The, the membership is more like to have first access to the workshop. So. Let's say we only have 10 slots for a workshop that's more personalized. Those members will get priority. You know, if we have certain recording days in the studio that are blocked out for member member content, they'll get priority access to it. Does that help a little? If it's a tall, tall building and we can put it on the roof, we won't need much tower. But if it's slow, we'll need a tower. So it, it actually would depend on the location. So regardless where we go, the area, the, the area of it is going to be the same? Like if this chair beside the building is going to be the same? The base of it, yeah. yeah. All right. So the base of it is going to, it's going to be small. Most likely be a pole to begin with. We don't need much of a footprint. But what we do need is to anchor that pole. So if you imagine maybe... 20 to 30 feet, because we need tie lines to hold this pole upright. And it won't be able to be on a residential. It needs to be an industrial area. If it does have, if there is residential around it, there's different requirements that we have to meet. So at the very least, we like options. If you bring us options, we can suss out whether or not it's a viable one or not. I appreciate your interest. to reiterate on how important the tower is. The tower is actually more important than the studio. So we are very, very much looking for options and site locations. And, and there are some we appreciate locations you. we are exploring that we have to send stuff out to so we're Use the mic. The Use the mic. We can't hear you. <laughs> We've already started looking for, for with, with potential locations. There are a couple people that have emailed us with, with information. So. We're getting rolling on it, but this this is a process that we've heard can be the make or break for a radio station. 
is getting that, that tower going. So the, the next couple months are pretty focused on getting this, this up and going. Mostly analog. So the board itself is an old Pacific Engineering board designed for KLOS. It was it's all analog. It has a couple of digital channels in it so that we can there's a digital to analog conversion built within the board. But the board itself operates on analog. Uh, most of the preamps that we have are analog. Uh, uh, generally, it's going to be an analog build out with capability of transitioning into digital. So we'll take that. Whatever's in the studio, transfer to digital, and that's going to go to the transmitter and out over air. So we're building it mostly as an analog studio. Now, having said that, it's mostly about the file types that get transmitted. So every file that we transmit is going to be a WAV file, and it's going to be at 16-bit and somewhere around 44, yeah. about 1K. So if anybody's interested, that's what you save your files as, so that there's continuity to it. Sounds like yes. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get the online broadcasting first uh, so that we start to develop a footprint for the radio station. And we need to have an online presence because of the limitations within our permit. We're not going to reach all of Long Beach. So we want to make sure that online there is coverage so that people in our area are hearing information. And you know, we, we also will make sure to develop an app and be integrated into things like TuneIn, so that people who, you know, are, are can't get the signal, you know, in like Bixby Knolls or, or North Long Beach, like, so that they can basically tune in based on their apps and, and get that going. Ron, you had a question. Uh, yes. Yeah, so right now the goal is just to get the tower up and going. So even if we're not in the most desired location initially. The, the important part is to get the tower up and broadcasting. So right now, we'll take anything we can, basically within our parameters, because after our two-year probationary period, we can apply and make the case for the FCC to move our tower and strengthen our broadcast. What about the roof of this building? It's not in the map. No. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, west of the 710. We have maps available too, so we can get you one if you're interested in, in seeing where it's at. It's also in our presentation and we'll make sure to put that up online so you can refer back to the, the map. So yeah, right now it's just get it where we can, you know, and then move it later. Yeah. <laughs> the important part is that we have the permit and not to lose it because even though it may feel small for a couple years, the potential impact that it has, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, can be big. And we can look into partnering with other low-powered FM stations, you know, to build kind of like a network to broadcast each other's content as well. So those are things we'll be looking at too, is partnerships with other low-powered FMs. All right, let's go to our music shows. Will you have a music license? Is that part of our budget? That's part of our, our online stream. Yeah, that's, that's the, where we're budgeting is getting cleared to have all the licenses that we needed, and that'll be part of our capital campaign, too, is what budgeting. Was the question? Repeat the question. It's, will we have the license, or the licenses, the music licenses to, to broadcast that? So that is factored into our budget for what our capital campaign will be for, for online streaming. There is, when we filed for the FCC permit to begin with, the FCC approved us for a tower location that's located somewhere in San Pedro area. So that would be the stop loss that you're speaking of, but it wouldn't reach much of Long Beach hardly at all if we were to broadcast from there. So that's why our immediate desire to move the tower within a 5.6 kilometer radius of where the tower is yeah. currently licensed at, that's our priority so we can get closer, as close to downtown as we can to broadcast to as much as Long Beach as we possibly can reach. If anybody else doesn't have any questions, we're going to take a quick intermission. Um, you know, we welcome everybody who's here from the public to stay if you like, but we're going to actually go into a voting uh, process for our members. 
uh, members, if you haven't picked up your ballots, you can actually just check in at the table and pick up your ballot and sign for it. We do have, we are voting for some new candidates for our board of directors, um, and as long as, uh, as well as giving you guys an option to ratify the vote for our, our name change and our new bylaws. Um, so again, if you're a part of the public, we welcome you to stay and, and, and be, observe the process of this. Um, but only our actual voting members will have a chance to vote. Um, that said, if you want to become a member of the organization, we will be processing payments over at the membership check-in table. It doesn't mean you can vote today uh, because there is that 90-day waiting period, but from there on, you'll be able to vote at the next meetings that require any kind of membership vote. So, And to be a member, you it's $50 a year. Um, if you're a student, you can pay a student fee, which is $25. Um, we also have options if you volunteer a certain amount of hours, uh, we'll grant you a free membership. So, thank you. I'll just say something really quick, and that is, you know, this has been a big struggle. I really want to drive home to all of you. I feel like when you move in the right direction, good things come. So the fact that Ron has given us a space downstairs is going to build it proves that we're on the right path. So I don't want to be that annoying public radio person begging for your support. But I think, you know, it's cool to give money to all the other stations, but even $1 helps us. We're that much in need for money. So I would like to say, if you aren't members, please join. Tell people to join. And also, please help us find a station. You know what we haven't talked about? There needs to be like a prize for whoever finds us a location. Like, we all come to your house and cook dinner or give foot massages or something. <laughs> but please, please, guys, we're a small group even here now. You're, on the, you're kind of on the early startup edges of this radio station. We need everybody's help desperately. So whatever you can do, we'll be so very grateful. All right? Thanks, guys. Make sure to get your membership in. Hang out. Uh, have some snacks and drink. And thank you for being here. Love you guys.